to the channel, guys. Uh, today we are removing the immobilizer from um, a VW Golf uh, 1.6 liter engine petrol. It's a car from 2002. It means that it's a Golf 4. So this ECU is a Siemens Simos 2.1, and uh, as you can see, it's the the ones that the board look like a sheet of plastic glued to the aluminium um, casing. So meaning that it's going to be a little bit hard to uh, desolder the EEPROM, which in this case is a 93C56, 93C56, that's what it is. Um, so I'm just adding a, a, a little bit of uh, my own uh, solder to make the process of removing it a little bit easy, easier and um, I'm going to use my uh, hot air station and my tweezers to twist a little bit because there's a little bit of glue like uh, varnish on top of it that uh, holds the thing in place as well. As you can see here, it's a bit of a struggle because of the the the, the board is so thin that uh, the aluminium casing sucks all the heat from the from the the solder, and um, also because uh, there is that varnish glue type thing that. Um, holds everything in place so even if you melt it to the right temperature you just you need to twist a little bit till you see a little bit of movement and then you can um, actually remove it okay so it's removed now i'm going to be using my xprog um, pro, uh, a prompt program programmer <coughs> With this uh, adapter here, I'm just going to um, make sure that I put the first pin on the right position, or uh, if that I put the EEPROM with the right orientation, so I can um, read the EEPROM uh, correctly. Just waiting on my uh, soldering iron to get to the right temperature. So hopefully it will work um, perfectly. Okay, first off, so I add some flux to the solder pads there. Now I'm just uh, cleaning the the solder, old solder from the previous project. Now I'm going to be soldering the EEPROM in the adapter uh, so I can get a a good reading. Okay, so it's soldered in place. Now it's time to go to the computer <clears throat> and select 93C56. Uh, it's an ST, so which means that it's a M93C56. Now I'm going to read the EEPROM content. And in this case, in this um, in these types of ECUs, uh, they are pretty old already. And I've been doing this for a few years. So I don't use any software to demobilize. The only thing I have is I have original files with the emo files 
in uh, in uh, storage so i have my own uh, debt bank that i can go and <clears throat> compare the two then i know which um, which modifications i have to do to the to the dump of the eprom in this case is just uh, three bytes they are on the first line uh, i'm going to show you now um, pretty much whatever the the bytes are in the original uh, EEPROM, you just uh, replace those with uh, 31. As you can see here, this is my debt um, bank. I have on top the original file from a car like this. And on the bottom, I have um, an, the same car, but with the HEMO off file. It's been done by me a few years back, and I still save those files just for this situation. So now in the first um, line here, you're going to find <clears throat> 394 uh, bytes. So you have to change those three bytes for um, 31 and then just write it back to the EEPROM and um, put everything back together. Here I'm just reading the EEPROM again, instead of using the saved file. So then I can compare the two to make sure that um, it was a, a good reading. It was, so I'm going to make the changes. The three bytes, I'm going to change those for uh, 31 and then write it back to the EEPROM. I'm going to read it again, just to make sure that uh, this time the read comes with the new changes uh, that we've made, just to make sure everything went well, because sometimes there are a few EEPROMs that don't let you change, uh, which those are called OTP, if I'm not mistaken, which means uh, one-time programmable. Um, it's not the case on this one, but I, I'm just warning you about those types of situations. Okay, so now it's time to remember the orientation of the EEPROM. I'm just going to remove this um, 93C56 from the adapter of the XPROG machine. I'm going to put it back. As you can see there, that's the little black dot next to the EEPROM there. That's the mark that I've made marking the orientation of the first pin, uh, just to make sure that um, I put it the right way, otherwise the car will not work <clears throat> and you can even cor corrupt the, the dump of the EEPROM. That's not a big problem since you have a backup on the, on the computer. Still um, double the work so it doesn't worth. You might as well remember the orientation of the EEPROM.
after the job is done, make sure you have a clean job. Uh, it's uh, soldered properly, nothing uh, shorting, and um, so that you can do the job only once. Now it's just time to put the cover back on. If you can, just eat up just a little bit around so you can add uh, the glue um, to stick again and then just bolt the 4X T25 bolts um, and that's it, pretty much done. So it's time to um, send it back to the customer and um, yeah, that's it guys. If you like this video, please uh, like it and uh, guys, please stay safe. See you next video.